Okay, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. We're here inside the Cube live at uh, Santa Clara Silicon Valley with uh, my co-host Dave Vellante, who's back good on the plane from Vegas. <laughs> good to see you again, John. Yeah, just in from Sin City. That Stu place is, is crazy. Stu was subbing for you. Did an okay job, I thought. Did yeah. a good job. Good. Thank uh, you, Stu. We're here with AJ Chandramali. 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 Right. <laughs> yeah. On one shot. <laughs> uh, from Intel, you are a cloud and data center manager. You work on... Um, you know, sharing the Intel best practices around cloud, data center, consumerization, security, to your IT peers. You did a big presentation here, in the weeds, detail, big hour presentation. So let's, one, talk about uh, the trends, um, why you're here, yeah. kind of what you're talking about in your talk, and then some of the macro trends going on in this big trend of consumerization. Obviously, we all know about Apple, we all know what's going on with Google, we know what's going on with mobile, cloud, mm -hmm. Amazon. You know, it's the industry, but now IT is impacted by all these these sure. trends. So, uh, it's a paradigm shift, it's an inflection point, all those things being said in the industry. Yeah. So, let's hear it. All right, yeah, sure. So, I'm here, <laughs> um, I had a presentation, like you mentioned, um, sharing Intel IT's best practices around cloud computing virtualization. So, cloud computing is a hot topic these days, uh, as I'm sure both of you know. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, Intel, we were actually ahead of the curve. Uh, we started our cloud initiatives back in 2006 in our design grid environment. And so we've had a lot of experience in this area. And one of my um, objectives, my job functions, is to share those best practices, those key lessons learned with my peers in the industry. Um, so, <clears throat> so I focus on cloud computing and our data center strategy, but in Intel IT, I think there's three big trends that we're focused on um, this year and the next year. Cloud computing is one of them, like I mentioned. The second thing is IT consumerization. So another thing that Intel IT has done what is... What does that mean? Yes. I mean, that's a big, I mean, everyone talks about it. We do all the time, but yeah. what's your definition for that? Sure, uh, IT consumerization is the second one. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And the third one, of course, is security. So to your question on IT consumerization, what that means is we've allowed consumers to bring in their own personal devices, smartphones, into the enterprise and have allowed our employees to access corporate data on their devices. So that's a pretty big paradigm shift for, for Intel. Um, you know, security is a big concern. Most Intel employees have their own smartphones already that they purchase, so why not let them bring it into the enterprise if it helps them be more effective and efficient, if they can see their email without attachments on their handheld devices, if they can see their calendar and know what rooms to go to or book conference rooms from their smartphone, why not enable that? And, and the, so that's what we've done. And these three initiatives are not unrelated, are they? Right? I mean, consumerization and cloud, um, you know, you start talking cloud, you're talking security, but is there an element of consumerization that involves things like pay as you go? You know, I think consumerization, I think I swipe a credit card to to buy a software as a service, or maybe even to buy some storage from it, from S3. Is that a dimension, or, or are you not there yet? No, you're exactly right. Um, you know, to your point, security, uh, your first point, security does transcend both of those areas. It transcends everything, actually. Um, you know, I outlined our three Intel IT objectives, at cloud computing, um, consumerization, and security. But even Intel corporate-wise, you know, security is a huge, um, huge pillar for us in addition to energy efficient computing and connectivity, you know, evidence by our acquisition of McAfee just recently. So security definitely impacts all of those areas. So how about the... Well, the EMC, the, Dave, talks about, we had the CIO of EMC on the queue. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, Sanjay Merchandani. And they eat right. their own dog food. So is there, what, what's the intel, as they say, eat your own dog food, meaning you guys build and test and deploy? Is there anything going on there you can share? Uh, that's unique to Intel that you've brought to the market? Well, you know, actually, at, um, as a member of Intel IT, I've sworn an oath, so to speak, to not endorse or speak yeah. about any uh, vendors, so I'll have to <laughs> politely decline on any comment there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how about... So how are about you using virtualization? Yes, we are actually... Okay, that, all right. Yeah, I, I would, start, I would like to talk there. about that. Um, so yeah, we're actually, at Intel IT, we're very proud of the progress <laughs> we've made in virtualization. Um, we ended 2009 at 12% of our OS instances virtualized. We more than triple that in 2010, and uh, close out the year at 42% virtualized. And our end goal is to be 75% virtualized. So virtualization is the foundation for our cloud, and um, you know we've made a lot of progress there and something we're very proud of. How about apps? How far have you taken it into the application portfolio? Um, Virtualization? Or? Virtualization, yeah. You're still talking about essentially yeah. uh, OS instances, yeah, right? How yeah. about the applications? I mean, is yeah. it a similar percentage? Or? It, it is, actually. And one of the things that we've actually just enabled, too, is the ability to virtualize our mission-critical applications. So we've you know, virtualized some of the easy stuff. But to get to eventually to 75%, you have to start virtualizing your mission-critical applications, um, meaning applications that are inside your DMZ, for example. Um, 
So we've uh, demonstrated that we could do that. We've tested that vigorously. And you know, one of the things um, that are now stopping us, one of the things we have to do to get into production mode is the security aspect of it, um, which we've also found a way to um, to implement as well. So, so, so VCE is a coalition with uh, VMware, EMC, and Cisco, and mm -hmm. Intel recently joined that, mm -hmm. which we're now calling Vice. <laughs> so VCE is being renamed by, uh, called Vice. The Vice um, Squad. Intel's yeah, now in the Vice Squad. <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer VCE, so Mike and the Pels love that new acronym. Um, mm -hmm. But are you guys, so can you, do you have any experience with that involvement at all with uh, VCE? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. What do you think about the concept of cloud in the box? I mean, yeah. you know, Ellison calls it cloud in the box. Yeah. I was wondering, John, if, if 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 Oracle can do cloud in the box, does that mean Amazon can start charging monthly maintenance and raise its prices by 10x? You, you think that's possible? Well, I mean, we talked about that. <laughs> Oracle being very cloud-centric in their last Oracle Open World. You saw Larry, Larry's yeah. keynote, and he threw Dell under the bus, threw HP under the bus, um, his partners, yeah. uh, and saying, we own cloud, especially what he said, and he wants to own it, you know, yeah. A to Z, up and down the stack. Sure. But, um, but, but what about that whole convergence trend? Yeah. Buying logical blocks of compute, storage, and networking as a... Uh, as a, to support applications. Is that something that you guys are, are looking at or is that? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, Intel, we're leading an effort. Um, it's called our, um, you know, two efforts we have. We have a cloud builders program and our open data center alliance program where Intel, we're in a unique position where we work with all software vendors. We're not, um, you know, we like to consider ourselves as the Switzerland, so to speak, right? We work with every software vendor out there and we're in a unique position to um, be able to um, you know, lead an industry group and an, an initiative like You'd that. You'd be very well trained on the media speaking. You deny, you admit <laughs> nothing. You know, <laughs> you're going you're to be Switzerland. Yeah. You love everybody. Yeah. Uh, right, well, but you got it. We are pretty rigorous about our media <laughs> training, so. Uh, <laughs> you're good. Yeah. I have to admit, you're good. You know, we're okay, we're going to get you somehow, yeah. believe me. We're at a storage yeah. conference here, and uh, everybody, you know, the, we talked about uh, the practitioners in the Wikibon community. They're always saying that, that, that virtualization breaks storage, right? It jams IOs through the roof. Our estimates are that it increases IOs per MIP by at least 4x. Are you seeing that sort of IO storm and how you how you dealing with that? Are you changing the way you do backups or is it just yeah, no, sort of business the, as usual? No, there's no question about it. Um, in fact, you know, we've seen the bottleneck is no longer um, processor compute uh, power anymore. It's networking uh, is, is the bottleneck. And so because of things like virtualization and the huge explosion in uh, not only, you know, compute Intel, we've seen a 45% year over year compute growth, 35% year over year storage growth, and our networking growth has been explosive as well. And so that bottleneck is, is now on the networking side. And so we've implemented uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet. Uh, we've done some POCs on that and plan to deploy that soon, moving um, eventually to a converged uh, fiber channel over Ethernet. And eventually, um, you know, after that, we, we see demand for 40 gigabit Ethernet networking. So well. you're, you're one of the, the guys who are going hard after sort of end-to-end -end, uh, Ethernet, FCOE. Yeah. And, and w what are you finding are the benefits of that? Is I mean, obviously, it's cutting your, your cable bulk. Is it yeah. cutting your cost yet, or are you yeah. still on the other side of the curve? Yeah, I mean, really, fundamentally, I mean, there's a lot of benefits, but to, you know, keep it um, uh, simple and, and up-level, you know, it's really performance and cost. Uh, those two things, uh, you know. It is pretty done. simple, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we I mean, try to overcomplicate. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's a lot of technical thing, reasons for it, yeah. uh, which, you know, I'm sure. Uh, what about multi-hop, man? We don't have yeah, to go right, there. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I was uh, advised early on. I don't know, maybe it was my, uh, they told me not to go into the weeds. Don't so. say multi-hop on this show. Yeah, <laughs> so it boils down to those two things. How about security? Let's talk about, you know, security is one of the evil twins mm -hmm. of the cloud, the other one being management, right? Yeah. So, so, you know, the whole premise behind security traditionally over the last, you know, since I've been in this business is, you, know, you build a moat around the castle, yeah. and you protect the you know the perimeter basically, right. and, and virtualization kind of changes that, right? And the king yeah. wants to leave his castle every now and then, and, right? And and so how do you architect security for the cloud? Yeah, yeah, no, it's very interesting actually. At, at Intel T, we have begun a new um, re-architecture of our security initiatives, and really what it boils down to, to summarize, is cloud in some ways can also help improve security. And what I mean by that is the following. Because of cloud, we're now able to understand, you know, first of all, who is accessing what information from what device. And, you know, based on those three things, we can then push out the right amount of data. So, you know, if you're outside the firewall versus inside the firewall, you're going to get a different uh, access to a different set of data. If you're accessing the data, if you're requesting the data from a smartphone, um, your car even, your TV, they're talking about the compute continuum as well, or your, your laptop, that's going to affect what kind of data you can you know have access to and and lastly who you are I mean what kind of permissions um, uh, do you have are you a sales guy or or not and that will also depend on what kind of data we will allow you to, to see you know 
that also ties back to the consumerization trend with, you know, we've enabled um, iPhones inside our um, organization, but we allow folks with iPhones to see their email, their corporate email and their calendar, but not attachments. So we've, you know, taken a holistic view and, you know, a nuanced view and make, depending, like I said, on who the person is, what device they're accessing it from and, and what information they're requesting, that all plays into what information they can... So you, your premise there is that the cloud can actually be more secure, at least you're talking about the endpoints now, yeah, right? Yeah, Potentially. Right. Right. Now what about the mess in the middle, right? Because yeah. you don't know which port is attached to which storage yeah. or which LUN or which server. Yeah. And yeah. How do you architect for all that stuff yeah. that's all abstracted now and it's changing constantly? Right. You can. Um, you can build that intelligence in, and that's something that Intel is working you know, very vigorously on. It's what we call the compute continuum. Um, Deep. You're talking about yeah. architecting it within the system. In the chip, yeah. Yeah, okay. And so you know, once you get below the various OSs, below the various, you know, it doesn't get more secure or more fundamental yeah. than, than the chip itself. And you guys have made some announcements there that got a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have, with McAfee as, as well as some others. Yeah, so so where are you with that? Is that sort of, you know, you're, you're in pilot with that? Are you actually in production mm -hmm. with any of that, that technology? You know, or? I'm not as close to it, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell you exactly, so, um, you know, I've seen the announcements just like you have. Yeah, okay, so, um, let's see. So how about, you know, can we talk about um, how you protect data yeah. um, in this new world, right? So uh, I was talking to a customer the other day, and. He said to me, you know how you know how I back up two petabytes? Mm -hmm. I said, no, how do you back up two petabytes? Yeah. He says, I don't. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. so, so with all this data tsunami, all this virtualization cloud, are you changing the way in which you protect data? Is it, uh, yeah. what's going on there? Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's, it definitely, you know, impacts it. We have to be, you know, even, you know, very vigilant in making sure, especially with virtualization. Um, there are technologies that Intel does bring to bear to help in these areas. Things like TXT, for example. It's our trusted execution technology which ensures the integrity of a hypervisor upon boot up. So you don't have any compromise. You know when you've um, you know, booted a hypervisor that it is a secure, uh, secure VM. And we have a paper that we published on this, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. that goes into a lot of detail on. Uh, so you know, Intel, we're baking in, we're, we're creating these technologies. Another key technology for us to answer your question is around encryption. Um, and something we've built into our chips called AESNI. Um, which is advanced encryption security, it's a new instruction set. And that also helps improve the performance of encryption so that now, you know, prior some IT managers, there's always a trade-off, right, um, between security and performance. If you encrypt everything, you take a performance hit. Now with ASNI, you don't have to compromise anymore. You can have your cake and eat it too. Let's talk a little bit more about cloud. Um, when, when Intel talks about cloud, inter internal, in, well, Intel IT, what specifically are you talking about? You're talking about private clouds. You're talking about you're using public clouds. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing there? Sure, it's both. Um, you know, so Intel IT, we've, you know, our cloud strategy is to grow the cloud from the inside out. So what we mean by that is first building our private cloud and using our public cloud selectively where it makes sense. For instance, you know, our non-differentiated applications, you know, applications that don't necessarily provide um, a competitive differentiation or advantage, you know, we move that to the public cloud. They're not example. producing revenue. Yeah, what's an yeah, example? Yeah, like our HR applications, you know, yeah. benefits applications, um, expense reporting. You know, Intel does expense reportings that are probably not that much different than the way you or anybody else does it. So that doesn't need to be inside our firewall. We can, you know, put that in the public cloud, and that's what we've done. Um, but things that are sensitive, right, that do contain sensitive IP, um, you know, obviously Intel, we're a design company. We've got we don't, there's a lot of things we don't want out there and we don't want to risk and so we'll keep that internally so, in our private cloud. So did, did, you, did you encounter, I mean I'm sure you did, what, what were some of the challenges that you encountered when you went to that sort of, let's call it a hybrid model yeah. um, and, and what, kind of, what kind of things would you do differently if you had to do over again? Yeah, well, you know, I think um, the, the big thing is, it was actually the benefits, you know, yes, about challenges, but really it's the benefits, the promise of, of the cloud that really drove us. Things like agility, um, efficiency. You know, we started, the cloud wasn't an end in and of itself. It was a means to an end. And, you know, being able to improve that, for, you know, a great example of that is our on-demand self-service. It used to take us 90 days to provision a server. From the time um, an, an Intel employee requested, you know, access to server.